What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, got a pretty big unboxing here. You got three slabs here, and then two raw books here. One of them that I actually won as part of a, a giveaway for a contest. So some cool stuff. Let's check these books out. Right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So like I said, got some cool books here, five books, five boxes. One of them is probably one of the cooler books I will have shown on this channel, so pretty excited about that one. Before we get into these books, got to talk about the sponsor of this video, Fanalytics. If you're a follower of my YouTube and Instagram channels, you know that having accurate and comprehensive data to make my comic buying, selling, and investing decisions is extremely important to me. Fanalytics has exciting plans for the future to provide the most accurate and up-to-date sales data as well as predictive models to help collectors make the best decisions with their hard-earned money. Keep an eye on my YouTube and Instagram channels for more announcements and dedicated content in the future. So make sure to subscribe to their Instagram for future announcements and click the link in their profile to register for beta access. The link to their Instagram is in the description of this video. All right, we are back. Let's check out these books. Out of these five books, I have only owned one of them before. It's in one of these boxes, uh, these Australia Post boxes. But so we'll start with those. I don't know which one is in which, and so we'll check this out. Uh, then this book here, uh, this raw book, I'm probably gonna get this one graded. I bought that one to get graded, so we'll take a look at that one uh, once I get this open. But uh, yeah, these, uh, this one came a long ways. <laughs> so all the way from Australia for this one and one of the other ones, uh, picked these up on Instagram. Uh, looks like we've got, some peanuts in here. Try to not make a huge mess with those. But yeah, you always worry a little bit with with shipping like that because it's got to travel a long ways, and you you know a lot of things can go wrong on the uh, on the way on the way here. So but it looks like it's packaged really well. Lots of bubble wrap, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'll cut right here and we'll come back after this thing's out of all this packaging. A few moments later. All right, so we we got that out of there. There's a lot of bubble wrap in here, so I'll save that to use for you know something else that I ship out. But this is not the one that I've had before. Uh, this is a cool book, and pretty excited to uh, get a chance to pick this one up. Presents really really nice uh, for the grade, and this is thing number 12. And if you are not familiar with this book, it is the first published Steve Ditko cover. So pretty significant cover. And yeah, he was doing horror covers early on. And uh, so yeah, so this is from this run called Thing. There are, are a few really in-demand covers that are that are in this run, some really expensive books. Um, this one is a 3.0. It's a slightly brittle page copy but presents really, really well. It has, I don't know if it's a tear or a crease or something like that, like right here, it looks like. Uh, but overall, colors really pop. There's the back cover. Uh, just a, a really solid presenting copy. So happy to be able to pick this one up and never had this book. I don't think I've ever had a book from the uh, the Thing run before. But definitely one if you're interested in pre-code horror, uh, definitely run to check out. There's some pretty cool covers in there, and this is one of the one of the big ones, um, just because of uh, the big thing being that it's the first Steve Ditko cover. So that's the first one. So that means I know what's in this second box here. I have had a uh, a copy of this book before. Um, I had a slightly higher grade. I had a. Uh, a 6.5. This one is a 6.0. And this one out of here. Lots of bubble wrap in this one too. Not uh, not any packing peanuts though this time. So let's get all this out of here. This one doesn't seem to be, for whatever reason, it's not as tightly packed as the other ones. So, uh, 
don't need to cut to get this one out. Yeah, that, man, that is a really good looking copy of this book. All right, so there's all the bubble wrap for the second one. So, like I said, I have had a copy of this one before. This is one of the most in-demand covers from the golden age for, you know, for pre-code horror. And this is Shock Suspense Stories number six in a 6-0. Uh, it's got a cool little date stamp up there in the corner here, October 29th, almost Halloween for that date stamp. Um, but this is a incredible looking copy. You can tell that it almost certainly was a restored copy at one point and they cut out the uh, the restoration. You can see the little, uh, these little parts on the spine here where somebody had filled in a spine tick almost certainly. So a couple of them there. And then there's a little piece cut out of the corner here and a little bit that scraped out here. But this, I, I mean, this is a, oh yeah, and I think there's like a little, yeah little bit that it got scraped out down here too this this is an incredible presenting copy just incredible I, I i mean i know it has this little piece missing here that had to get removed but for a 6-0 i mean this is a really really good looking book i i think it could pretty easily have a shot at getting like a 6-5 I, I wouldn't even be surprised if this would have a shot at getting a 7 I mean, this is a, this is an incredible looking copy. Um, so, so yeah, very happy to, again, to, uh, to pick this one up. Uh, just always a cool book to get. Uh, like I said, I've had it one other time, had a 6.5 before. Uh, off-white to white pages, so really nice page quality. This is a Wally Wood cover. You can often tell Wally Wood covers uh, when, when he has women on the cover uh, by how he draws their clothing. It really, he tends to do this like draping type clothing. And uh, you can really see that here. You can see that with like Strange Worlds number four, Strange Worlds number five. Uh, then there's some other EC books and things. But uh, yeah, it's one of those kind of like trademarks that it's usually pretty easy to tell a Wallywood cover uh, when when you see that. But yeah, this is one of the one of the top EC pre-code horror books that's out there. Definitely keeps getting pricier and pricier. Uh, a lot of demand for this one. All right. I think I'll I'll do the uh, I'll do this one next. So this is the uh, the book that I won as part of this competition. So uh, what this was was this was on a a Discord called the Collector's Room, and I'll put their Instagram in the details of this video. So if you want to go check it out, uh, basically it's a place where you can buy, sell, trade. Uh, it's a discord where you can buy, sell, and trade all kinds of different collectibles, whether it's comics or cards or pulps or whatever it might be. So what this was, was this was a competition that was just started by Kihei Collectibles on the, in the Collector's Room Discord. And he, if you're not familiar with him, he uh, is also one of the heads of Fanalytics and also uh, one of the main guys that puts on the Collector Summit show. Uh, so he's big in the, you know, the comic collecting, pulp collecting community, and he just basically put this kind of notice out in there in the Discord chat for the pulps that, you know, this was when Heritage was having a big pulp sale, and he put out, I think it was four different pulps, and he said, you know, guess the prices, and whoever's the closest, uh, he was going to give a free pulp to. And I ended up being the closest. I think I was off by like $100 or $120 or something like that. And these, these were expensive pulps. I mean, it was like tens of thousands of dollars. And so he sent me this pulp. And here we go. So I, I, am, I am not big into pulps. I have owned a few. Uh, I am much more into comics. But pulps have been getting a little more attention lately, uh, especially because... Uh, Her or not Heritage, CGC is going to be uh, grading them soon. And so they showed their graded pulps uh, at the Collector Summit. They had some at, I think, New York Comic Con. And so if you're into pulps, if you're interested in grading and all that kind of thing, uh, there's actually a video that, that Fanalytics put out on their channel recently where they interviewed Matt Nelson, the head grader and, and president at CGC, and they went over a lot of those details about pulps. If you want to check that one out, I would I recommend going and checking out that video. It's really informative because for me, someone who's not very familiar with pulps, 
Uh, it was a really useful video. But for pricing, I am very familiar with pricing. So even though I wasn't familiar with pulps, uh, I was able to uh, price these out pretty well just using history from Heritage and, and that kind of thing. Uh, but what this is, is this is this pulp called The Feds. And a really beautiful presenting copy from the front. There's some a piece missing out of the, uh, out of the back there. Uh, but really uh, crazy cover. And that's that's one of the things you learn with pulps. So pulps are, if you're not familiar, it's like, they're basically like books. It's like, it's like relatively cheaply made books is the way I would generally describe it. And, uh, but they have just some incredible covers on them. A lot of the cover artists from the golden age that people are fond of and, and collect and everything, they got started in pulps. And a lot of the really famous covers that are in there from the golden age are homages to covers that were done in pulps. And so, uh, there is a connection between pulps and comics, a pretty a pretty significant connection between pulps and comics. Uh, but me, I'm still I'm still main uh, mainly into into comics. But I thought this was pretty cool to uh, to get this uh, this copy of a of a pulp. So so yeah. So this is what I ended up uh, winning from being able to guess the closest to the the values of those uh, of those pulps that sold on that heritage auction. But yeah. So yep. Thanks, uh, Kihei Collectibles, and yeah, make sure to go check out uh, the collectors room on. Instagram, and then you can uh, get access to the uh, to the Discord, and then if you want to, you know, buy, sell, trade that kind of stuff there, that is an, an option that you have there. So, so yeah, that is uh, the pulp that I won. And oh, one other thing, just yeah, with pulps, like this is where you can kind of see how th how thick they are. And one of the things you often have to check with them is the spine. Spines often split, and uh, you know, will separate away from the pages and all that kind of thing. But they tend to be pretty fragile. Um, Com uh, even compared to, to comics. All right. I'll save uh, this one. I'll save this one for the for the end. Uh, I'll open this one now. And this is the one that I was saying one of the cooler books that I'll have shown on the channel is in this box. It is a very low grade. Uh, it is actually a 0.5. Uh, I picked this one up from... I picked this one up from Red Hood. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, he's on Instagram. He goes to all the big comic shows and all that kind of stuff. And he was having a Instagram live sale and saw this book and I made an offer and ended up picking it up. Um, I have never owned a copy of this book before. It's, uh, I've talked about it quite a few times on this channel. I actually, uh, it's one of the biggest pre-code horror books that's out there. And um, so this is Red Hood. And one of the biggest pre-code horror books that out there that's out there, I felt like this was a great opportunity to be able to pick up a copy. Like I said, low grade, it is 0 0.5. It is missing one page. This is Tomb of Terror, number 15. This is one of the most recognizable pre-code horror covers. This is done by Lee Elias, and it is the exploding face cover. I still don't really know what's going on here, because uh, it's like there's like little like gears and screws and everything. Like I don't know if it was like some type of bomb that went off and it's his face that's blown off. If those were in him and his, it was inside of him and his face is blown up from something inside of him. I have no idea, but it is a it is a crazy image. Colors are pretty solid on this one. That was one of the things that sold me on it is that, yeah, there's a little piece out of the corner here. It's missing that first page. But in terms of actual presentation for a 0.5, it's it's pretty good. Uh, here's the here's the back cover, the back cover. Um, but yeah, a 0 0.5 for one of the most recognizable, one of the most important pre-code horror covers. Uh, I felt like this is a great opportunity to, uh, to pick one up and, and yeah. I mean, just, it's just a wild cover. I, I've said before, like the ones that are extremely violent like this, they really don't tend to be like my cup of tea, you know, like the, the, the books that I like to go after. Uh, I tend to go for the a little more subtle uh, pre-code horror covers, but these are the ones that really ultimately led to the Comics Code Authority being established. I mean, this kind of stuff being sold to kids and just super violent covers. And Harvey Publications, who did this one, they're just, I mean, they were really, really pushing the limit. Well beyond what, like, EC was doing for the most part. Uh, Harvey's were extremely violent. Uh, and this is one of the most 
uh, the most violent ones. I, I think the other one was the Black Cat Comics 50, which I believe is also Harvey. And those two, it's like, they're like a pair that go together. It's the, that one's the melting face where the guy's got the radium. And then this one's this, the exploding face. But yeah, that's those two. All right. So now for the last book. This is one that I am considering getting, well, actually not even considering. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get this one graded. Uh, if you have watched some of my recent videos where I've done like some recaps on sales from Heritage and everything. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I've talked about this a little bit too. This is a book that's just from, I mean, in the golden age right now, one of the hottest segments of that market. Uh, I mean, just going, I mean, it's just going crazy. I mean, every time I see books like this coming up for sale, uh, especially if they're like reasonable grades, it's just bigger and bigger numbers every single time. Uh, let's get this tape off. All right. So if you haven't figured out what this is yet, this is a Matt Baker romance cover. And in this case, it is Teenage Romances number 35 and so it's a matt baker cover and you can always see he's always got some story basically that he's telling on the covers of these and it's a pretty nice copy i think i estimated it at about a four uh, something like that um and with let me get all this tape off just with these that's one of the things and, and i mean it looks pretty nice in person i'll have to it's got some, it's got like a tear. I think it's got like a tear down here. Yeah, I think there's a tear there and some creasing here. I mean, colors look pretty great. There's maybe some like staining or something that happened up here. It might do better than a four. Um, let's, uh, let's take it out and take a look at the back because these romance books, I don't know why, uh, but they are near impossible to get outside of like a six. It tends to be like the, I, I talked about this in my heritage recap video where I think it was a teenage romances number 30 or 43, uh, that had the huge sale and it was like $9,000 for a six O. And so like that type of grade tends to be, oh yeah, I mean, it's a nice looking book. Uh, so you can see like pretty glossy, the, the main damage is really down there in that corner where there's some creasing and a tear. And then up in this corner, there's some discoloration. Let's see what the back looks like. It's just been a little while, so I don't remember. Oh yeah, there's that's right. There's some uh, there's some damage on the bottom here as well. There's a crease and then another tear there. Let's see if we can get it to show up in the light. Yeah, so you can see that crease goes all the way. So I I think my assessment at a four is probably pretty accurate. I mean, with the, yeah, I mean, it's, let's make sure it's fully attached. Yeah, the staples are offset on the back. It's fully attached. Uh, it doesn't look like it's like split or anything like that. Yeah, I think a four, maybe, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, with the tears and everything, I think uh, maybe it gets a four or five because it is really, really nice presenting. Otherwise, it's just, it's got a lot of damage focused down on that, that bottom, that uh, bottom edge. But I mean, like I said, for, for these types of books being graded as a, you know, like a 4.0 to a 5.0 in that range is actually, it's almost like high grade. Um, I mean, it's generally getting one of these books in a, in a six is almost unheard of. Usually there's maybe one or two copies in a six or higher. And most of them are, are kind of down in the, the 2030 range. And this is definitely above that. Uh, pretty great presenting copy, despite the, the flaws on the bottom there. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Matt Baker romance books, they are, are really kind of, you know, hot right now. And I've definitely been keeping an eye out for them. And so decided to, uh, to pick this one up. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's the last book. Definitely one that I'm going to uh, be sending in to get graded. Uh, it will be interesting to see how it comes back. 
Uh, the tricky part with, I'll say the tricky part with, with the Matt Baker romance books is it is a relatively small market. So even though the Baker collectors are spending a lot of money right now picking them up, it just, it generally feels like it is a very small market and it's very focused on where they often are, are buying. Uh, I see the big numbers often on Heritage. And so that's one of the things, like you'll find that if you start watching a lot of these different auction houses, eBay, Instagram, that kind of thing, different books sell better in different places. That's just something I've learned. And the place that seems to sell uh, bakers, like Baker Romance, the best is Heritage. Uh, and so it's almost like it's one of those things where maybe if you, you know, if you have them or you, you get them graded, that's the place to, to sell them. And it might be, I mean, even though you're paying a much bigger premium to sell them on Heritage, you know, a much bigger seller's fee, um, the fact that it gets, they often get a much bigger number might uh, cancel that out. But, but yeah, those are all the books. Uh, I thought some had some pretty cool ones in this one. I mean, definitely this uh, this Tomb of Terror number fifteen. Uh, I've said before, my favorite cover from this run is actually Tomb of Terror sixteen. It's like the drowning cover, uh, but fifteen is is definitely the the biggest cover from the run. And then you know can't can't ignore the uh, you know the the pulp. So if, again, make sure to go check out the Fanalytics page if you're interested in pulps. They've got that great video they put out recently. And we've got this uh, this shock suspense stories number six. It's a yeah the best cover from the run. You know shock suspense story six I think is the best cover from the run. Uh, no question on that. And then just this really unique one. It's not one that I see too often. Thing number twelve that first Steve Ditko cover. Pretty crazy creepy cover uh, back when he was doing pre code horror. But yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video. Saw some cool stuff. Uh, maybe some books that you don't see every day. If you want to see more stuff like this. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, notification bell. Make sure to check out the sponsor of this video, Fanalytics, and I will see you in the next video.